Welcome everyone, I'm glad you could make it. Today I'm going to start a painting using black gesso. Gesso is used to prime the canvas to give it a great surface to apply your oil paints to. This will also help with the dark scenes and be able to do shadows really well. And when you cover with oil paint, it's going to help the oil paint just pop. Well, at least that's what I'm told. This is the first time I've ever used this stuff. I have tried just regular black acrylic paint to do something similar, but unfortunately as soon as you start putting the oil paint on top of it, it actually starts to come off. Starting to work on the trees in the background and doing about the same thing as the bottom. This one's going to be a little rougher as you can see. It looks like there's little branches and stuff. So I just took a one and a half inch brush and dabbing it, dab it in on there so it kind of forms some trees in the background. This will also be covered up a lot by oil paints and stuff but it does help with detail. I don't know if you heard the squeaky little dog sound back there. Yeah, that's my lab. I sped this up so it goes a little faster. And it sped up his little bark too, so it makes him sound like just a little guy. To give it more of a professional look, it's always nice to do the sides. That way you can actually hang it up without a frame, and it actually looks finished. Now I'm going to go ahead and start softening up the edges of these trees. And how I do this is by using titanium white mixed with burnt umber, raw umber, and yellow ochre. This will give it more of a woodsy effect, but it's still going to be covered by a light layer of oil paint to soften it up. My goal here is to still work on a focal point, so as you've noticed, it's still high on the outsides and lower in the middle, so it helps draw your eye into the painting. Now you'll notice these trees, or at least the shadow effect, are a little darker than the rest of it. The reason for this is if this works the way I like, it's actually going to pose as branches. I decided to add a little bit more yellow ochre right here, so it actually gives it a little bit more interest. I grabbed some titanium white and a little yellow ochre with a palette knife and I'm blending it in for the sky. These are oil paints now. I decided to use a palette knife to apply the paint on the canvas. This allows me to pick up a decent amount and apply it exactly where I like. Now I'm using a one and a half inch brush and blending the paint into the background to give it a nice soft effect. This is a transparent layer that still allows the background to be seen.
Right now I'm adding just a little bit more titanium white. I want to make this a little bit softer on the outside edges on the top so it actually blends better. I'm adding just a tad bit of cadmium red just to give the sky a little bit more color. Then I'm going to blend it with that one and a half inch brush because right now as you can tell it's a little too much but I plan on that anyway. The white that's actually on there mixed with the yellow ochre will blend really nicely. Now it's time to start adding some color to the trees. Since this is a fall or autumn painting, I figure I'd start using some orange by mixing cadmium yellow and a tad bit of cadmium red. The brush I'm using is a one inch brush. I decided to add a little bit more cadmium red and now I'm going to add some shrubs to the foreground. I'm still using that same one inch brush. I don't want it all to be the same color, so I'm adding a little bit more cadmium yellow here and there, a little bit more red, a little bit more orange. Adding layers helps give your painting depth. This helps the viewer be more drawn in. I'm using a palette knife to add the tree trunks. I'm using a tad bit of burnt umber mixed with a little bit of lamp black. And then I'll go in with a brush to actually fine tune it. To add the smaller branches, I'm using a number two liner brush. Now I also thinned it out a little bit with mineral spirits, just a little to make it thin. So when it when you apply it, it actually goes on a lot easier and it goes over the thicker paint underneath.
Now I'm using my palette knife to scrape off some of the paint that allows that darker layer that I did previously to show through. This actually helps for fine detail. Using this technique you're actually able to go ahead and put in a lot more fine detail than even the liner brush. This is one of my favorite parts. Now I'm using a number six fan brush using the same paint, maybe a little bit of variation with darker and lighter colors, but this allows me to actually add more leaves and branches to the trees and make it look a little bit more realistic. Still using the one inch brush, I mixed a little cad yellow with some phthalo blue to come up with this green and some variations of it to give the painting more character.
Back to the fan brush to go ahead and start adding more detail. Now it's time to create the land in front of the trees. We're going to have a lot of grass here and to do that we're going to use some cadmium yellow mixed with a little thalo blue and this will give you a green. So depending on the mixture you can have variations. As you can see I'm actually doing a hill here and we're going to have water in the front. So of course water goes down to the lowest point so it's nice to be able to have a hill so it looks more realistic. Down in the black part below, I added a light layer of oil, and then I add a little cadmium red and a little blue, phthalo blue. So when you add the white and drop it straight down, you start picking up all these great colors. Now I'm adding a little bit more titanium white and then you just give it a little brush across to blur it out and it gives it a great water effect. I think we need something to hold all this water in so we're going to go back to the two inch brush with the green paint and add a little land. All you have to do is just dab this across, you know, put it where you want it and fill it in. Try to remember the lay of the land and put it accordingly so that way it gives it some variation and it looks more realistic. And again the green paint is a mixture of cadmium yellow and phthalo blue.
By bending the brush up like this, it actually helps give it a grassy effect, so it looks like you have tall weeds. And now I think this painting is completed. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more.